it's not yet happening, but it's going to happen. And I'm very happy to say that Luca de Barg and uh, Georgis Osokins, both pianists and Luca de Barg, even more than that, a composer as well. But I am privileged to introduce them as the first two artists in residence in the 22 years old Cremerata Baltica history. And this is a very special moment for us because permanent guest artists, uh, this is a status which I somehow relate to the future of Cremerata Baltica. Why is this to musicians and not others, because we had wonderful encounters with both of them. We had uh, many projects. Um, we just finished a, a great recording of a completely unknown or almost unknown Polish composer and pianist uh, Milos Magin with Luka. Uh, Georgi is, is participating in our uh, next uh, important project for this year, the Chronicles of uh, current times, uh, some, uh, something related to the centenary of Mieczysław Weinberg, a composer who uh, became very dear to Kremerata, not just to me. So we are uh, building up project after project, but uh, what uh, I especially appreciate that both these artists, uh, outstanding artists, are fully uh, accepted endorsed by Kremerata Baltica. Uh, they both have a wonderful relationship with our musicians and I'm just happy that it's happening because the future of Kremerata Baltica, after all, as long as possible was me, but the future of Kremerata Baltica is in our guests and in the gifted musicians of the next generation. Mm. And here you have two of them. So I'm very happy to be part of it, to be part of uh, further uh, projects. Um, for me the sound is the beginning of everything and uh, I'm always uh, amazed with musicians of Kremerata Baltica, with uh, this multi-talented uh, family. Um, they have so high attention to um, everything we do on stage. They have musicianship, they have mastership, they have intelligence. Uh, all of them are incredible, interesting individualities in life. And uh, uh, searching and discovering. Uh, so I feel really very close uh, to this team. And uh, um, speaking uh, same eloquent uh, language with them um, for, for me, it really means, mean, means a lot. So I'm really honored to be uh, part of this whole building. Say. This family, I would family. say. <laughs> okay. I will never forget uh, the turning point of my relationship with Gidon first, because uh, it started with a meeting we had together uh, for duo recitals. But when Gidon offered me to play with the Cremerata Baltica, I didn't know what to expect at all. I was not aware of the ensemble. I'm not very connected, virtually connected, I would say. And I, I just knew that it's an orchestra uh, initiated by Gidon and without conductor. And I started to work on the Weinberg Quintet arranged for the, the orchestra with passion, with all the passion I could put in this work. And when I arrived, I was in front of these men and women without a single clue of what to do, actually, because it's very seldom in the musical life when you have the occasion to really face human beings. And music cannot get rid of human relationships. And the most important thing for me was this encounter that was kind of a shock. And I realized uh, some things about me, and something was happening with the musicians and we started this adventure together with the Weinberg Quintet and something happened and me, I could not make conclusions about that. I just kept very preciously the feeling inside of me. But then Gidon confirmed the feeling I had by inviting me to do more and more with this ensemble. And I just fell in love step by step. It was very strong from the start, but I fell in love step by step with 
uh, all the ideas, all the craziness also, and uh, um, the unexpected uh, reactions. And uh, Cremerata Baltica is part of my life, and I want myself to contribute to the history of this ensemble. And I want to thank you, Guidon, to give me this chance. Thank you, Luca.